In this video, we're going to take a look at how redirection actually works. Once it's installed, you'll find it under Tools. And right here, you'll see the redirection that I made. This is the one from my story from the first video. And you can see here my link to Welcoming Negative Criticism, which doesn't work very well at all. We have the option to edit, delete, or disable this one. Let's edit and take a look at what we have here. I put in my original bad URL and then the proper one. I skipped the description, but then you can choose what kind of HTTP code to send. I want it moved permanently. Up here on the right, you can see that it's been accessed 32 times, which isn't that many really. The bad one wasn't out there for very long. And the last access was May 7th. So it's been a while. If I wanted to make a new one, I could simply do it right here. Put in the bad URL, the good URL, and hit add redirection. Now you can optionally choose some other things here, but they're pretty specific and you're unlikely to need them. And also you can do some things besides redirect to a good URL. You could redirect to a random post. You could do a pass through. You could go ahead and send the error 404 or just do nothing. It seems odd that you would make a redirection and do nothing, but that's the way it goes. You can choose to do regular expressions, but unless you already know regular expressions, I strongly recommend you don't go down that road. They're pretty complex. The next thing I want to look at is the 404s. This says I have 561 items. That means there are 561 times there has been a 404 page sent to someone. Now some of these are created by spiders and spammers trying to break into my site. For example, this RSS image in WP Includes. That should never exist. Here's someone trying to find a JS file in my cache. Here's someone trying to upload an image. This one looks like it might be a valid 404, but I'd need to examine. Here's someone trying to break in with a frame source, and on and on and on. So most of these I don't really care about. But let's make one so that we can see what we want to do with it. I simply go to my page and put in something that doesn't exist. There, now I have a 404. I reload this page, and here it is. Now from here, I can show only this IP, so I could see all the things created by this IP. I can look it up on a map. If I click this, and you could add a redirect right from the spot. Instead, I'm going to go back to the redirects page and send it someplace else. Let's find a place we want to send it. Let's send it to my wallpapers page. So right here, I put in slash howdy, and the target URL is that. And I simply add redirection. There. Now if I go in and edit it, you'll see I have some of these options here. So now I'm going to go to slash Howdy, and we end up right back at my wallpaper page. And now if I reload this page, you can see that I have one hit there. One more thing that I want to show you before we leave is this log file. This shows people hitting your redirects. Now you can tell that I don't have very much traffic on my redirects by the fact that the only one here is my example that I just made. But that's okay. If you rebuild your site or you move to WordPress from something else, you may end up with dozens or hundreds of redirections and your log file can grow pretty quickly. And you'll want to keep an eye on it. That's all I have to show you with redirection. It can do some other things, but the vast majority of its use is what I've shown you.
It's particularly useful for making sure your end users get to where they want to go, as well as helping Google stay happy with your site. It communicates, and it lets them know what's going on, and that you know what's going on with your site.